today we're going to talk about your relationship with your mother. Because why wouldn't we? The thing is, I'm a mother, I have daughters, and I had such a terrible relationship with my mother growing up and such a fantastic relationship with my mother that I thought, you know what, I have my daughters. This is never gonna happen to me. I'm gonna have the best relationship with my daughters. And that lasted as long as teenage. And then I got into the teenage years and I'm like, oh my God, please help me as there is screaming and there is shouting and there's all this stuff. So is it that toxic relationships between mothers and daughters is just a thing? We just have no choice because I would, resent that. I'm like, I don't think that's reasonable. And I don't have a toxic relationship with all of my daughters all of the time. They just take it in turns. So today we want to talk about what that's like and how to work with it and how to help it. Because having a bad relationship with your mother impacts every single thing about how you feel as a human being. Because as a child, you're so dependent on your mother. Your survival is so dependent on your mother that to have a bad relationship with your mother literally becomes a question of, am I not worth it? Do I not deserve love? Is it just that I'm unlovable? So please subscribe so that you know when I am next gonna put out videos, which is every Wednesday and Friday as a minimum. And sometimes we put a bonus video out on a Monday. But please, and please join in the conversation down below and tell me now, do you have a good relationship with your mother or not? What was it like? And if you are a mother, what has that been like for you? Because teenage has been a very exciting thing. Now, one of the interesting things about having a dysfunctional relationship with your mother is in my experience working with strong, sassy, successful women is that we have tended to have much worse relationships with our mother and I don't, never really thought why. I've never understood the core behind that because you would think that as you become stronger and more successful, you just need more help from your mother. But it's not always there because many of us, our mothers don't understand our lives. They're like, why do you have to work so hard? Why do you have to do this? Why, do you, why don't you just go marry a nice man? Was, you know. And I remember a client saying to me yesterday, what my mother doesn't understand is, I'm bringing my daughter up to buy her own house not marry a man who's going to buy it for her. In there lies the single seed change of our relationship with our mother. And the more your relationship with your mother changes because our lives have changed, it makes it much more difficult for us to actually have a relationship that functions and works. Now, let's not say that being a mother is automatically makes you Mother Teresa and a saint because there are many relationships, that many things that a mother does that can be really harmful to a mother-daughter relationship. And some of these we do without actually even thinking or wanting to do them. The primary amongst this is being constantly critical. The thing, it's not unusual that the phrase that nothing's ever good enough for your mother, does that ring true for you? Because this isn't only something that works for you, but it is something that works for an awful lot of people. You have, it's, 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 it's an archetype of having a perpetually disapproving, perfectionist mother. And nothing quite meets her exacting standards and nothing you do ever makes her happy. And I have news for you, that inner critic probably has her voice and sounds like her. Another thing that mothers do, almost instinctively, is to be a control freak. Because you, as a mother, have constantly looked after your child's life. I think it's very hard to give that up as you get older. I'll let you know when mine get more older, but I think that is the case. So there, she's, your mother will still be saying what to behave, what to wear, what to do, even when it's just not relevant or age appropriate. And I mean, for me, like I did a massive TV show and I think we had up to about two and a half million viewers. And I came up and I said to my mother, what did you think? And she went, why didn't you wear lipstick? And shouldn't you have brushed your hair before you went on? And I'm like, oh, for the love of God. Really, really, this is what we need to be talking about? And it hurt me. Um, and it took me a while to understand. She was actually just trying to be helpful and not want to murder her. Because, you know, it did really annoy me. But my mother considers herself an expert on this. And it doesn't seem to matter that I run an entire life and a business and I'm a mother, she just thinks she knows best for me. 
The third thing that mothers do is they are master guilt trip manipulators. I'm trying to think of another way to say this, but bad mothers can actively make you feel really guilty and responsible for anything that she does because she can't have her own way, because she knows more than anyone how to hit your emotional weak spots and buttons because she's been doing it your whole bloody life. The fourth thing that mothers can do, which is a trait that is horrendous, is be passive aggressive. Passive aggressive mother won't outwardly express her anger or resentment, or even jealousy, frankly, because mothers can be jealous, but she'll deliberately be late, she'll not turn up for something important, she'll act really like sullen for no apparent reason, and she just won't be excited and happy for you. And this is quite toxic behavior, and this is also what mother who won't actually enter confrontation with you. She'll also avoid emotional intimacy. Does that sound at all familiar? That's the passive aggressive version of it. The fifth version of a toxic mother is one who disrespects all your personal boundaries. It's one who opens and reads your private mail without your permission, rings your friends, shows up at your house whenever she wants, and you know, let me tell you, this actually happens. Or a mother who just doesn't except that you need privacy or boundaries. I remember not ever writing a diary after first writing one and then having my mother read it. I was just like, oh my God, I must have been seven or eight or 10. And I was just like, no. And even to this day, when I write morning pages because I do my journaling every morning, I hide it because I have an instinctive response to my mother doing this. This is, some of this is conscious, some of it is unconscious, because when you are a mother, it's something that you just kind of instinctively want to be all over your kids. But you can, you, you know for yourself where you're literally creating issues here and showing a complete lack of respect to your children. So did any of those five ring true for you? Because if they did, I want you to give yourself permission to feel that this is unacceptable behavior and that actually it's not good for you. Having your mother behave badly to you in like one of those ways makes you feel not good enough. It makes you feel ashamed that there's something wrong with you. It makes you feel that you've got to kind of remain small and powerless in order to be lovable and that you can't put your head above the parapet. And it also means that you kind of don't act like your full self because you don't want to threaten her. It also means you accept a much higher tolerance of poor treatment from people around you because you've not built boundaries. And I see this again and again in some of the most successful women in the world. When they come in for coaching and they just don't have any personal boundaries because they weren't brought up by somebody that made them think that was important. And as a mother, it is your job for you to teach your children to have boundaries. One of the things I taught my children first was to say no, especially my daughters because we are so bad at this as women. I don't like it when they say no to me, but it's kind of my job. The other thing that you can feel when you don't have such a fantastic relationship with your mother is that there is a sense of being very competitive with other women. Not that they're there to love and support you. You can end up being very rigid and dominating. It can lead to eating disorders, depression, and addictions. The thing is, family dynamics are massively challenging and complicated. And having a toxic relationship with your mother means that you can be afraid to admit that you feel unhappy and uncomfortable about your relationship with your mother because you are brought up to think that this woman is it's the most important relationship in your life and it is but you are allowed I'm going to give you permission to love your mother and not like her behavior because once you can accept that it gives you a sense of freedom to think it's okay you're behaving badly and I don't like that and I'm allowed to love you and think no don't do that and if you think about it, this is a terrible analogy, but actually stay with me. If you have a cat or a dog that you adore so much and they behave badly, would you think it's okay because I love you that that's okay? You wouldn't think that. You would think no. Even with a child, you wouldn't think that. Try and get your head around it with your mother because you just need to be in a place where you think, I don't like the way that you treat me. And there is an enormous sense of freedom in being able to understand that. You can also speak to a counselor. You could just speak to a really, really good friend who understands because somewhere in your brain, you're gonna think this is your fault. It isn't. It isn't your fault. 
you could just be having a bad toxic relationship with your mother. Now, if you like the video, please like. If you know someone that has this kind of relationship, please share the video with them. And please leave me comments saying which one of these resonated the most with you.